welcome back to the Riri Show. It's been um, a minute, but I'm ecstatic about this particular episode. It's been a long time coming. Um, this crypto tycoon has a work ethic truly like I have never seen before. She has her own blog, um, newsletter. She trades, uh, runs her own YouTube show, consults, um, and probably the most important job of all, she's also an incredible mother. So please welcome the amazing Wendy O. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And thank you for having me. I'm excited to chat with you. I'm excited to chat with you too. It's so nice to connect, um, you know, just in general, I mean, in the space with other um, other ladies and and women, and it's been just an absolute blast. So um, yeah, I'm stoked. And I think, you know, that was a mouthful in itself. And I'm sure I missed, um, you know, uh, um, certain things. But I think my first question to you has to be like, how did this happen for you? How did you discover crypto, blockchain? How did you get involved really? So what happened was... Um, I uh, my stepson a million years ago, like in 2011 was like, can I borrow your credit card to buy Bitcoin? I was like, no, this is weird. Like I was, cause I'm not tech savvy. Um, so I knew what Bitcoin was, but I thought it was for really smart people and I'm smart, but I'm not tech smart. I'm more street smarts. I've got, um, intuition. I know how to problem solve those things. And then fast forward, I had just had my daughter and I wanted to finish college and be a stay at home mom so that I can be there with my kid. Cause I was working in healthcare it was a crazy commute. And I went into a TD Ameritrade because I wanted to start investing a little bit of money, like learn how to trade and stuff. And they're like, you need to put down $25,000. It's like, I don't have $25,000. Um, so it really turned me off. But then I found I found out that I could um, trade Bitcoin 24-7-365. So I was like, oh, let me try this. And then it wasn't like my first intention to become a trader end of 2017 or when I first found out about Bitcoin. I just wanted to be able to invest. And and then I kind of saw, I got onto crypto Twitter. I saw these like cartoon characters trading, making money. I was like, I can do this. I have a really strong math background. So I did. And I taught myself how to trade and then the rest is history. You know what? That's so impressive. And I think um, it's easy to say, you know, like I'm not the smartest person ever, but I think, you know, as you've developed, like, I mean, it's no secret. I think you are one of the smartest people. I mean, you. look what you've done for yourself. It's impressive. So, um, so when, I mean, you, because you are the person that like, you know, a lot of people really turn to you for like regular information, insight updates, you know, does that ever carry a lot of weight for you? No, it does. And I'm very transparent on my channel. Like if we do an ad, we disclose it. Um, if we hold something, we disclose it. If we take in profit, we disclose it. Like I do my best to be, and that's why I'm doing more live streams because it's easier for me to communicate the information. Like on Twitter, I literally just kind of fun pose. I'm just like yelling at the SEC and whatnot, <laughs> but YouTube is a great place for me to connect with my audience and to talk about like what I'm doing, um, give my opinion on things. And I'll say, Hey, you know, I don't really like this project anymore. I used to be super bullish on it, but I don't. And I've sold or whatever it is. Yeah. And I think that's super important and something too, that, you know, even I really appreciate about you too, is I just feel that you are super transparent. And I think that really comes across to, to viewers. Like it's pretty easy to tell when people are kind of, um, you know, honest or not honest. So, um, props to you there. So you yeah. are somebody too, that's like super incredibly passionate about education. Really? Why is this a big focus for you? Or how do you feel the general space can really improve when we talk about, you know, things like new adopters? So this is the thing. We're in this really amazing industry and it's very, it could be easy to make money, but it's very hard to protect your capital. And a lot of people come into crypto and they get the misconception that, oh, if I listen to this Twitter trader, if I listen to this YouTuber, if I buy this, I buy that, I, da, 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 they're going to get rich and that's not how it works. So my job as a content creator, first and foremost, is to remind people, you know, do you know how this works? Do you know what an investment is? Do you know what risk management is? Do you know these things? And it's my job to kind of push people and remind people that no matter how successful you are, you still need to keep educating yourself. Um, in the United States, we weren't taught personal finance and we're not, we were, our schools don't focus on STEM, math, technology. People will say that they do, but they don't in any way, shape or form. So part of my job is just reminding people that you need to continue to educate yourself, do whatever works for you. And part of educating yourself is gonna help you become a better investor because you're gonna be able to spot like, iffy projects or, you know, something changes in a particular project. And if you're somebody that's continuing to educate yourself, then you're going to end up becoming more well-versed than other people that aren't putting that effort in. And honestly, too, the best investment is to invest in yourself. 
Amen. And you know what? Um, actually, I really appreciated that. I've heard you speak on it a few times, but it really does begin with, you know, our education system. And I remember even I was listening to you talk on this a while ago, but I remember even when I was young in school. Um, I mean, you, you we didn't talk about finances. We learned how to cook. We learned how to sew. I remember was a big I don't thing. even remember learning that stuff. Like I don't even like all the stuff I learned in school. I we learned sex ed. We learned like basic math, P.E., history like really lame science yeah. and we didn't really learn we didn't really learn critical thinking and that's problematic too because like if we have a if we have a difference of opinion i think it's important for us to be able to talk it out like mature responsible adults showcase decency and respect to each other but also learn like when i when i worked in healthcare cuz i worked in hiv aids for 7 years part of my job was making sure my clients were adherent and that means that they took their medication when they were supposed to make sure they're healthy well when you're dealing with a, a subgroup like that with very very different demographics like you can be cuz hiv does not discriminate Right. It doesn't discriminate in any way, shape or form. So literally the people that it was, it was crazy. So I had to learn to interact with different people from different cultures, different races, different ethnicities, different groups, different sexual, like all kinds of stuff. And in order for me to help better, and I used to tell my clients this all the time, in order for me to help you, you need to, or in order for, if you want me to help you, you need to help yourself first. And part of helping yourself first is coming in and being respectful towards me. So, and giving me the information I need so that I can help you. Like, if you don't help me, help you. I can't help you if that makes sense. No, it makes, it makes total sense. And actually that's something I never really realized that we connected in, but I was, I was a nurse before this um, nice. as well. So I, I hear you there like a hundred percent. It is absolutely like that. And if somebody doesn't want it, you can't make them have it. And I think that's all also like, you know, a problem we have in the space too. Sometimes is people want to come in and just know right away, or just listen to somebody like you said, but you really have to put in that work yourself. So mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, so, I mean, we've mentioned your, um, many talents and I'm sure there's many more, but let's talk a little bit like swing trading. Why swing trading over day trading? And how did you develop your skill here? I mean, it takes a lot to master that. I'm still not where I need to be. And I've, I've been slacking off a lot lately. So I got to get back in the books. Um, but day trading is fun. Scalping is fun. I just don't have the time to like, I'm a mom, I'm doing all this other stuff. So for swing trading, it's easier for me because you're able to build your position and take a lot to take take more time to do so. And the cool thing about it is, let's say the market turned, like, let's say you want to enter in a long, like a six month long or three month long, one month long, if the market terms, you're able to get out of that a lot faster. And you're also able to protect your capital a lot better. If you're day trading, you have a short period of time to do something. I have had, um, I've had my daughter close positions out by accident, like all kinds, <laughs> like all kinds of crazy things have happened. So I'm like, you know what? I'll scalp occasionally, maybe take a day trade like when I have time. But if I don't have time, I'm not going to come out here and say I'm a day trader. I'm a scalper. I'm an expert trader. I'm going to trade when I have time. It's more of a, as a hobby to me and a way to make like additional income. But at the same time, trading is very, very hard. And a lot I sit a lot of stuff out and that's okay. If you guys are watching this, you can sit trades out. That's okay. Yeah. hundred percent. I think that's a I think that's an important note too, is um, you know, a lot of people get into to trading thinking that, you know, no big deal. I'll learn charting, I'll do this, but it really does require like a serious amount of attention all yeah. of the time. So um that's a great point there. Um, so what do you look for then when deciding, you know, what a strong project looks like to you? So right now I'm primarily focused on Bitcoin. Um, when we're talking about investing in altcoins, that's going to be a lot different, very, very different because right now in the bear market, I'm not super excited about buying altcoins. There was one project I, I scooped a little bit up, a, a teeny tiny bit, a super, super small amount because I wanted to increase my position. And I will, con I will consider increasing my position every time we hit various support areas. Um, one of the reasons why is I don't, I think the, I think we, Bitcoin will see $10,000 again, not financial advice. Um, I have limit order set all the way down to approximately um, $9,500 Bitcoin. But when it comes to altcoins right now, I'm just spending a lot of time watching and I'm advising my audience to do the same. I don't think it's smart to just start dollar cost averaging and on all these altcoins right now, um, because I do think the market is a little bit shaky. I think it's good to start researching projects to paying attention to NFTs, to different, you know, different, different things, join their communities, ask question, and then come up with a trading or investing plan. Um, and right now I'm just kind of taking that slow because I know I feel like we have a bit more of the bear market to go. 
Totally. And I mean, we are seeing too this expansion and, you know, there was so many, so many less projects years ago. And we're seeing too with altcoins. I mean, now you're in the thousands and thousands and thousands of different altcoins and projects, and it just keeps going. So, you know, how do you really decipher, um, you know, what is legit, what's not going to be rugged, what is going to be rugged, you know, it's a lot of information to kind of track and follow as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so being somebody that, you know, watches charts daily, um, you research, you know, economy, government, et cetera. Do you see the near future, um, in terms of market? Like I know where we've been in this kind of like bear cycle for a while. Um, do you feel like that's going to continue for a little while longer? Or do you feel like we're getting close to the end? I feel like um, Bitcoin happening as of right now, I want to say it's one year and 200 days. Again, you guys, that time does fluctuate because it all it's all dependent on the miners and all of that fun stuff. So try to learn the basics of blockchain or excuse me, try to learn the basics of Bitcoin mining economics because that's kind of how the market is controlled. Think of it very similarly to an earnings report or to a um, Bloomberg terminal, like so something like that. Like people need to understand that's how we analyze the crypto markets is kind of with the Bitcoin halvening schedule and Bitcoin mining economics. Cause that Bitcoin is still queen B and controls the entire market. Um, so I still think we've got a bit of time for the next bull to come. I feel like, um, this bull market was, has been really volatile, really, really fast, but I don't necessarily think it's over. And I'm just taking things day by day, taking things day by day. And I have my investing and my trading plans and I've got my bullish and bearish scenarios. So I know how to react if X happens or if Y happens. Yeah, hundred percent. And having a plan, I think is really important in that, in terms of, you know, just making sure that you're safe and not making any, you know, um, Ill illegitimate um, decisions last minute, I think is really important as well. I mean, sometimes you have to do that depending on where the market goes, but I think having a plan is really important. Um, you know, inflation is something we're really dealing with right now, like really heavy. Um, but do you feel like we're even near the peak or is this just really the start? Because, um, you know, the way it's going, I don't see it slowing down right away. It's really scary because we're in a big mess. We're in like a global economic mm -hmm. mess. And it what makes me worrisome. Like I'm looking at the, like by me, the closest gas station to my house, $6 and 30 cents. No way. Oh, you're way off, worse off than, um, than we are over here. And I, I thought we were bad. Yeah. So it, it's really, gas is expensive. Food prices are expensive. Um, this is going to sound kind of cringe, but I went to go buy a four pack of blueberry muffins because my daughter wanted that for weekend yeah. breakfast. Normally they used to be three ninety nine, you know. Now they're five ninety nine, and that's a big. This is six a six month difference. That's a big difference, <laughs> like okay. a big big difference. And I just don't see this ending well, and I don't I don't know when it's going to end, and I don't know how it's going to end. I'm just trying to watch the markets daily. Yeah, I hear that too. Actually, that's so funny because I went to the grocery store a little while ago too. And I was shocked because I went to go buy tomatoes. And I think there was like maybe six or seven tomatoes on the vine. They were like $7. Like I like that's like a dollar a tomato. Like that's nuts. I just couldn't believe yeah. it. I was like, okay, like, and eating healthy has even just been a struggle on its own. Like, you know, how does the average person really deal with that? It's absolutely wild. I know it's Getting a little cuckoo. <laughs> Getting a little cuckoo out there. Um, so to me, the worst part of, you know, centralization in general is really power and balance. Um, you know, when we're talking about, you know, banks and um and all of that. So do you feel crypto solves any of this to any extent? I mean, we're still talking, you know, um, the guys with the big bucks, we're talking VCs, we're talking all these things. Do you really feel like it solves anything in that department? It does, but it doesn't because humans are just trash. <laughs> so, I mean, the thing is, is the VCs we have in the space, they say they're transparent, but they're really not. Like, I want to see their token. I want to see their addresses. I want to see their unlocks. I want to see all that stuff. Um, So we do have a lot of big TradFi guys coming in, which is fine. You know, it's a true decentralized economy. We can't get, we don't get to pick and choose who gets to come in and what they get to do. But at the same time, it's kind of like, eh, but at the, but realistically, Bitcoin and crypto does give the power back to the people, just as long as the people you guys watching are responsible enough and take accountability for your own actions, um, and are in control of your money and, and your keys. A hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what area of crypto, um, or blockchain then in general, do you see the most growth in right now? Because I've heard you talk a lot about NFTs. I mean, in my opinion, they've made a huge jump forward over the last years, even months. Um, there's lots of talk of DeFi. Um, where do you feel like is the, is really the most growth? 
So DeFi is going to be important, but they're going to get hit hard with regulations. DeFi is going to get hit first and then NFTs will get hit later. I think the next bull run will again be driven by NFTs, um, by metaverse, by play to earn, by that type of stuff. So if you're watching this, I highly recommend you start researching NFTs. You start researching IP rights, royalties, um, predatory music industry, all these predatory industries that can be a, so that can be solved with NFTs because they do do that. Um, it is going to take a lot of time. Please also understand the last cycle we saw with NFTs was in the midst of the bull market. Market. That means we're going to have more bull market NFT cycles. We're also going to have more bear market NFT cycles. And also, please understand most of the products that were built are still in beta and most of them are going to fail. So my best advice to you, start following certain projects. Watch how they move. Watch how they work. Watch how they're building and then decide if you want to invest later on. But don't just jump into stuff right away, especially in this market. You're going to get decimated. So in terms of regulation, then, do you see that, um, you know, having effect on the way that, you know, cryptos are developed or how a founder maybe wants to, you know, start a crypto? Is that going to have a massive effect in your opinion? Of course, because in the United States, it's next to impossible to do anything here. And the more regulation we have, it's going to make it a lot harder for people to build. And at the end of the day, the legal bodies, all they want is control. That's literally all they want. That's all that they've ever cared about. So it's going to get to continue to be a lot more complicated and it is going to impact our industry a lot more. So exactly. maybe then do you see more partnering with like, you know, you're seeing these heavily funded cryptos and these newer start, uh, you know, startups partnering more with people with big, you know, big backings and lots of, you know, VC backing and stuff like that. Is that something you see? It's uh, to be honest, I don't have an answer for it because yeah. it's it's kind of like we have to take stuff day by day. Yeah, it's and, hard it's, to know. and sadly to say it's kind of sucks, but it's the reality. And it's the reality is because we don't know what's going to happen. I do know we're going to see a lot more heavy regulation coming in until the end of quarter one of 2023. Hopefully it'll cool down a bit, but we're, it's going to be pretty ugly for the next um, until March. March, um, March 1, 2023. 2023. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So in terms of um, use cases uh, for NFTs, so you're, we, I mean, we've seen things like music, gaming, fashion, um, you know, in the metaverse, tickets, stuff like this. Um, what use cases do you feel then haven't really taken off yet, but that could be incredibly important or valuable moving forward? birth certificates, um, real estate records, permit records. In the United States, you have to, if you want to do anything to your house, in most cases, you have to apply for a permit. You have to get a permit. Um, when you sell your house, you have to disclose what work you've had done on the house. Um, in order to pull a permit or to do any of that, it costs money and it costs time. And most, and our public servants here absolutely suck. So it'd be nice to see a solution to that with the DMV. Um, it would, there, there's all different types of use cases. Um, some are, could be a little bit scary and predatory, um, but at the same time, I feel like we, we're not done and we're still building a lot of really cool things. Um, I know that real estate records would be great on the blockchain, especially for NFTs and like underdeveloped places where they have don't have access to them. Um, and they're also like healthcare records would be nice for medical professionals totally. or medical partners, because I don't know about you, but I used to have to, I would have clients because I'm born and raised LA County. I worked in Santa or West Hollywood on Santa Monica Boulevard, I would have clients come from New York to LA and they're like, oh, I forgot my HIV meds. I was like, yikes. I was like, and, and because of the time difference and most pharmacies close or healthcare facilities close at five, I wasn't able to verify that the my client was on or this future client was on for this particular regimen because they didn't have their bottles and I couldn't get a hold of their doctor. I can't just dispense HIV medication. No it's kidding. Expensive. <laughs> so we would, so we would, you know, we would, it was a mess. So if I was able to verify something on the blockchain, that would have been helpful. Yeah, a hundred percent. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And the other thing, actually, I was just having this thought uh, before we signed on with each other, but even like, you know, talking so much about our education system, you know, like, but how much students spend on things like textbooks that are obsolete that they put out new copies for, you know, like, wouldn't it be cool if we could use, you know, NFTs for that or something where you just, you get rid of it, you sell it after and it, new, you know, new copies can always be updated one after the other. Like, I don't know why we're not really um, thinking we'll get there but yeah i'm hoping that we get there because i think it could have like really a great effect on the um on the education system altogether but nfts are really kind of endless so i guess yeah i mean i personally feel like this is um this is a big up and comer and we're going to see a lot more of it so um yeah um, but what is in the, I want to know really what's in the future for you, Wendy, because not you're, it's not like you're not doing enough already. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know really what else you could handle, but what's your plans moving forward? Like, are you going to continue what you're doing now? 
yeah, I'm just going to right now, I'm just going to stay um, making content. I really like making content. It's fun. I get to connect with people. I get to force people to use critical thinking. Eventually, I will hand my channel over to my daughter. Uh, and the reason why I want to build that sucker up to like a million subs and get that yeah. passive income with the monetization and just give her a script or let her talk about crypto three to five minutes a day. And then she can turn around and do whatever she wants to do with her life. Obviously, I'll still be kind of involved, um, but I would love to hand it over to her so she could live a good quality of life. And I'm going to just still be around doing my thing and still striving to be the best and to bring the best information to people. Yes. And you do. Absolutely. How old is your daughter now? She's six. So we'll see maybe in after the next, next four years, she'll take it over. Who knows? Does she understand a little bit about what you do? Like, does she, yeah. does she talk to you about it? Um, she doesn't really care. She's more interested in like her, her stuff, which is fine. Cause she's a Leo. Um, she knows what Bitcoin is. She knows it's money. She knows she's not allowed to tell people she owns Bitcoin. Um, she knows she has an online name and a, in real life name. And she also has her Bitcoin hidden underneath her rug in her room. Her, I have oh. her. I have a physical Bitcoin I gave her because it's like with kids, kids are very tactile totally. and they need to touch when you talk to them. So I'm like, this is money. This is what mommy talks about. This is what mommy does. This is what it is. It's a, a B for Bitcoin. So she has it hidden safely in her room. It's I love cool. that she even knows the word Bitcoin at age six or seven. Like, oh yeah, just absolutely. That's legendary. I love that you do that. Um, So, I mean, for yourself in the space, like who do you look up to when you're, you know, when you're this knowledgeable entity that's um, running around the space and everybody's looking up to who, who does Wendy O look up to, you know? Yeah. I'm like, yikes. Um, I actually, I'm very, I'm very particular about who I give my energy to. Um, I like to look I liked the people that I look up to is probably my great aunt. She's no longer with us anymore, but she worked um, back in the fifties, forties and fifties. She was, uh, I, I forget the story. She either, they immigrated here or she was born here, um, but they came from Sicily and she, mm. she lived through the, this. She, they, her and her family, they came between 1910 and 1930s. I believe I don't have all the documents in front of me, but she worked in a sweatshop and then she was able to um, sweep floors at chemical bank in New York while like in the wall street district, the financial district, they moved her up to a teller and she was able to train all of the high execs and whatnot. And, and she never married and she was able to travel the world, but she worked in finance and women didn't work in finance. Women stayed at home and they got married or they worked and then they got married and she lived life on her terms, according to how she wanted to live. Um, she, unfortunately she was never able to be promoted as a president or to a manager or anything like that because they didn't do that with women, especially women that were considered minorities. Cause back then Sicilian Americans were not, they were not considered like everybody else. Uh, but that's somebody that I look up to. Um, I look up to people that are that actually have boots on the ground that are doing great education um, when it comes in the community. There's pe like people that are smarter than me. There's some Bitcoin miners that I really like. And I, I just, I like, I like giving my attention and getting inspiration from people that kind of come from where I come from and that have good intentions and want to help kids and want to help, help up, uplift the underdogs and just do right for the community. Absolutely. Um, we have more in common than I thought. Actually, my family's from uh, Southern Italy as well. From nice. Yeah. So yeah. Love it. Um, and my grandma came, I think when she was 13 or something like that, she came on a boat over and opened her own hair salon. It's a, that's a story for another that's time. That's awesome. But, um, See, I yeah. love it. <laughs> she actually had to go to the bank and trick the bank to give her a loan, which was a whole other can of worms. Yeah. But... So, you know, that they did not, they literally did not, women were treated a lot different back then. And it just, it is what it is. And that, I don't know, it's just really inspirational for my aunt. Like, cause my aunt was a hard woman. She's a really, really hard woman, but she's also very loving. Um, the neighborhood kids used to come to her all the time. We're like, they're like, Lee, we're hungry. Can we come in? And she would always have like little cakes and stuff for them. Um, because sure. they used to live in, in, in Brooklyn, they lived in buildings and you know, there were some of the apartments, they had like seven kids in there and whatever. So she kind of took in a lot of the neighborhood kids and just fed them and hung out with them. That's so sweet. I absolutely love that. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan. And I think like kind of what you said too about like, you know, people that want to educate kids and it's kind of like, to, in my opinion, it goes both ways in a way as well, right? Like you see really 
you know, this, I, I don't really know how to put it, but middle generation or middle, you know, middle aged is really a lot of the crypto market. Um, but we have also, you know, elders and youth that kind of have to learn or, or, or adapt in the middle. Um, so it kind of goes both ways, but it's interesting. And I think, you know, being the, uh, an educational person and being somebody who's approachable is really important. Cause I think this space can go either way, yeah. um, depending on what your experience is like. I agree a hundred percent. Do you feel like our space has to change at all, um, you know, as new adopters come in, um, you know, and, and by space, I mean, you know, Twitter or um, Telegram, do you feel like it's difficult right now as a new person or do you feel like it's the most warm or welcoming place where it's easy to it's learn? More, it's a lot more welcoming than when I started. Yeah. A lot more welcoming. Um, but the thing is that there's certain people in the industry that are not going to change. So it's important for us to make changes as we go along and be more excited to welcome new people and focus on education. So it's we the new people get to change and not the old people are set in their ways. They don't care. Um, and that's fine. They can sit in their misery all they want. Um, but I think it's important for the new people to come in and for us to 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 make change that way. And they can have their they can have their stagnation. A hundred percent. Well, I super appreciate this, Wendy. I know I only have half an hour with you today. So um, I just appreciate chatting. Maybe we can catch up on the future one more time. Love that. Um, but yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you and um, we will catch up very soon again. So thanks for coming on. Thank you.